Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and look what came, which means it is time for some paper pumpkin alternatives. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I have to say at first glance, this might be one of my favorite paper pumpkins ever. Not only do I love the bright, cheery colors, but the card blanks themselves, they're kind of like alcohol ink patterns and gold foil. You know I love some gold foil. And look at this envelope. These are fantastic. I don't know if I'll be able to use those. This month's kit is called Box of Sunshine and it is meant so after you finish up with the contents of the kit that you reuse the box it came in and you send it out to a friend with some yellow themed happy cheery goodies. So that's a fun extra idea for this. Today I'll kind of be sticking to what the picture show or what the kit shows, but I'm going to be turning these into clear cards. So I'll be using some clear card bases. As I go along in the process, when I bring in a product, I will let you know about it. But right now, besides my clear card bases, I plan on just using items from the kit. If I do leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. For this first card, I'll be recreating the one on the top left. I got out the elements from the kit, and then I got out my clear card base from my stash and my Hero Arts Infinity dies. I believe I picked the second one from the largest, and then the sixth and seventh ones from the largest. I'm going to start this card by using the largest die that I chose on the card front. Now I probably could have just measured this down to the size I wanted and cut it, but because I'm kind of making a frame, I decided to go ahead and use these infinity dies. This next part I really couldn't cut out without dies because I did need a piece out of the center of the card front. I used the smallest die that I chose, I centered that on the card front in the die that I already put on there, and then I used some scotch blue removable tape to hold these in place while I die cut them. Once I had those pieces cut, I then used the middle size die to cut a piece of white cardstock from the back of the card. I was originally going to make this the mat for the piece on the front, but I ended up off camera cutting a black mat to go behind that, and then I'll actually use the white piece on the inside of the card for the message. Now that all of the paper pieces were cut, I started to assemble the card. The first thing I placed was the frame on the inside of the card base, and this I had to wrestle with a little bit, but I finally had it laid down and inside the card centered. Next, I grabbed the piece of white cardstock that my personal message would go on, and that just got adhesive on the back and centered on the inside of the card. Once that was in place, I then matted the other piece of the pattern paper with that black cardstock. Before I can put this on the card, I need to do some stamping though. I placed the blank sentiment label on the card front where I thought it would go in the end. And then I inked up and stamped both of the stamps that go on the pattern part. Now you will notice off to the side there I had a scrap of white cardstock. And that's just because since these stamps are new, I wanted to make sure that they were stamping nice and clear. Once that was done, I got out the sentiment that I was going to use, and I originally tried to put the hello and sunshine together on the block, but I thought the hello was a little bit too far away. So then I just stamped those separately onto the label. Now it was time to finish assembling the card. I placed the matted piece onto the card front, making sure that it covered up the white cardstock on the inside. Next, I placed one of the thin labels or the thin dotted stripes from the kit onto the card front, and then I used some dimensionals to adhere my sentiment to the front. Now the kit does come with mini dimensionals, but I wanted to save those for a smaller project, so I got out some I already had in my stash. 
Once that was done, I placed three of the sequins on the card front, and here's a look at the finished card. For my second alternative today, I will be recreating the Starburst card from the kit. I got out all of the pieces I would need for this card, and then from my own tools, I got out two rectangle dies from Spellbinders, I got out another clear card base from my stash, and then I got out a scrap of black and white cardstock. I'm gonna start by cutting down the card front with that same large Hero Arts die I used from the last card. Now I could have easily cut this with my paper trimmer, but since this die was handy, I went ahead and used it. When I placed this down, I did place it to the left of the card front so I could get more room to the left of that gold foil circle. Next, I placed my smallest rectangle die centered around the sun on the card front. And again, I'm using that same tape from the last card. It is still going strong. Then I realized that I didn't need the white cardstock scrap I got out, so I put that smallest die on the back of the card and cut one of those. Next, I used the large rectangle that I got out and die cut that from the black cardstock. Now it was time to do some assembling. The first thing I did was place the frame part again on the inside of the card base. I took my time trying to get a nice border around that piece. Once that was done, I took the small white cardstock piece, added adhesive to it, and then inlaid that in the die cut portion. Then I matted the sun part with that black piece of cardstock, and I did think that the black part might be a little too long to mat this evenly, so I just got out my little Fiskars photo trimmer and cut off the excess. This matted piece then got placed onto the card front, and I did my best to line up all of the lines from the sun's rays. The next step was to get my sentiment ready, and you'll see here that when I inked it up and stamped it the first time, it was a little bit smudged, but the great thing is the left side of this tag is not going to be seen, so I just flipped it around and tried again. The next step was to get the front decorated. I put down the black and white polka dotted strip, and then I put some adhesive onto the back of the sentiment label. Once I had that in place, I punched out the sun from the kit, added some of those dimensionals to the back, and placed that on the left. To finish this card off, I just need to add a few sequins, and here's a close up look at the card. Hey guys, I want to interrupt this process video for just a minute to tell you that at the end of this video, I'm going to be letting you know how you can win a paper pumpkin kit for yourself. I hope you'll stick around and find out more. For the third alternative, I will be recreating the one on the left with the lemons. So I got out all of the pieces I would need from the kit, and then from my own stash, I got out another clear card base. I got, went ahead and pulled out that Hero Arts nesting die, and then I got out a scrap of white cardstock. For this clear card, I'm going to be making an inner card that goes on the inside for my personal message. So I measured how big that black label was that I need for the card, and then I cut a piece of white cardstock that when I fold it, it is the same size as that black polka dot label. Next, I pulled back out the Hero Arts die, the largest one that I chose for today, and die cut a piece from the card front. Before moving on to assembly, I went ahead and stamped my sentiment. This one says, a little something to brighten your day, and that just gets centered in that larger tag. Now that all of the pieces are ready, it was time to assemble this card. And you might have been wondering this whole time why I cut down the part that goes on the inside, because it is the same size as a regular card. The reason I do this is to reduce the bulk on the inside to make sure that the card folds nicely. Once I had that yellow piece in place, I then adhered the inner card on the inside as well. And you'll notice here that I left an even margin on the top, bottom, and left side. This just follows the kit. 
One of the things that I like about clear cards is all of the layers and dimension you can have without adding bulk. Because you have the inside and then stuff on the front, you can have lots of layers but that they're adhered down still with just regular adhesive. I placed that first lemon on the front of the inner card and then the second lemon went on the card front itself. Finally, I placed that label or the sentiment tag on the front with some dimensionals. And since no card is complete without some bling, I added some more of the sequins from the kit and here's a close up look at the card. For my final alternative today, I will be recreating the gold striped foil card. The only thing I needed besides the items from the kit was a clear card base. And for this one, instead of it being a top folding card, I picked one with a side fold. This is going to be another one where I have a small card on the inside for my personal message and I start by folding the gold striped card that came in the kit. I then cut a half an inch off the top and bottom of the card and then I cut an inch off the side that was open. Make sure that you do not cut the folded edge. This smaller card then got adhered into the inside center of my clear card base and you'll see here that they both open the same way. The sentiment for this card says you are loved and it got stamped on the smaller die cut tag that came in the kit. And just like that, all of the elements for this card were ready to go. So it was time to assemble. The pineapple got adhered flat down onto the card base along with one of the polka dotted labels from the kit. Next, I added dimensionals to the back of the sentiment and placed that on the front of the card. Finally, I added some sequins from the kit and here's a close up look. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Did you think that I had forgotten about the hidden giveaway? I hadn't. If you want to find out how to win a paper pumpkin kit for yourself, all the way at the bottom of my description box is a link to an unlisted video. You can click on that and go and find out what you need to do to enter. Before you go over, I do want to let you know that you have to be 18 years or older, live in the United States, and be a subscriber to my channel. This is also a very quick hidden giveaway. I will take entries until midnight on Monday, June 22nd. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.